Hello. I did a little repairing to the painting from last night. Okay, Jericho is still over here. I put this these larger squares kind of indicate a castle or palace, you know, where the king would live. And I know these are small and kind of clustered, but there's a lot of tribes or tribes. There's a lot of people who have built their walled cities around in here. So this is green because at that time this was called the Fertile Crescent. Uh, misuse of the land, from what I understand, has has depleted a lot of it over the years. But I think a lot of that's being repaired, or they're at least working on it. Um, okay, so here's the two spies right here. They're hiding. But here's Jericho. And over here, this, I, it, probably this is also probably a fertile by now. You know, because it's right next to the Jordan River, but I I needed to indicate the difference here. So this is where they are, the, the Israelites with um, the soldiers and all that. So when they went back and reported, but this, I want to read you something. Well, Rahab, I, I don't want to go that far back, but... Rahab told the spies that the king or whoever, the king of their land and the other lands, they knew that God had promised that land to the Israelites. And so they were all scared. She used the word faint, which, you know, a lot of times faint in, is used for, you know, the faint of heart or just, you know, fearful. So, so I want to just read to you the, the number of, uh, let's see, where is it? Here it is. Okay. God is among you and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites, and the Hiv Hivites, pardon me, I've got this sideways, and the Perizzites, and the Girgazites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Old Testament words, or, well, I don't know if it's just that, but it's just, you know, a lot of those words are not easy to pronounce, because we don't know exactly how we're supposed to. But, um, that just gives you an idea of all these people that have built their city, um, city-states or whatever they were called it. I mean, Egypt had been a nation for a long time, but I, a lot of those were just more. Now, the Amorites, they had already fought them once and beat them. And they had not been in a battle before that because at the parting of the Red Sea, God did that battle for them. <laughs> He's the one who, who, well, Moses did what he was supposed to do, but God was the one who actually gave that power to part the Red Sea. Okay. And to this day, they're trying to figure out a way to explain that. And it hasn't. Um, it, they've, they've come up with several ideas, but anyway. Okay, this time, if I understood what I read right, the Jordan River is kind of out of its banks at this point point in time. So I'm going to, which way do I want to go? No, I'm going to go the long way. Okay. The Jordan is, is really swollen at this time of year. And so, but what happens, and I shouldn't have put so much of this. Well, I can, what happens is the 
Ark of the Covenant. I don't know that I went over the building of that, but it was when God told them to build the tabernacle. He had them build the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant was, is, I mean, that's where the Spirit of God rested with, or stayed with them, wherever they went. It was, so what happened was, God talked to Joshua, and the Jordan was stopped. It wasn't, it wasn't like the Red Sea. It wasn't parted. It was stopped, almost like a dam. As soon as there were uh, priests who were car carrying the Ark. Now, the Ark of the Covenant was not to be touched. The rods that they used through the rings to carry it, those were how it was carried. But nobody who was not authorized was supposed to get even within a certain distance of that ark because God was contained there. Not, I mean, not contained as in not concerned with the rest of the world and stuff, but as far as the Israelites, it, this was a very powerful source and a, I would say, also a source of comfort. Okay, now, I'm going to make a very slim effort here. Well, I'm, I'm going to make try to make a good effort, but I'm not going to even begin to think that I can do it justice to come up with this figure of the Ark. But there was a certain wood that they used to build the the frame of the ark and then it was covered as soon as the priests set their feet in the Jordan or touched the water of the Jordan then what happened was the Jordan backed up and it was stopped and it it's kind of like if you had a dam you know, if there was an invisible dam there and it would rise up to the top of the dam or up behind the dam, that's what happened with the Jordan. So there was no water down here and the, wa and the ground dried up. So then the eight, I think it was eight, the ones carrying the ark I don't know if I can call that bronze or not. But anyway. And then it had these two. If you look at an image of the Ark. They, it is so well defined in the Bible that. They, they being able to make a make it have a, a good artist to come on and even the I think even the rings that they used to to cut to hold the poles were gold or covered in gold and this and I believe even the rods were co covered with something but you, anyway so there's there's the rods that go through there all right So there would have been, these were of the priests, there would have been priests on each corner. One man for each corner, that's four. 
Why can't I make a stick figure even? Jeez. This is, oh, that's kind of a long leg one. <laughs> oh, please do laugh at my art. <laughs> it gives me... I have to laugh because sometimes things just do not do what I want them to do. And that's usually my problem. Hey, there's a stick figure. How about that? And then there's one up here. Not so good. Anyway, and then there would be one here, one here, one here, and one here. But they are not actually touching the arc itself. Only the poles. And the people crossing... Now, see, uh, the, they sent the guards, or the guards, the um, soldiers. They went through the people, giving them the instructions. Uh, so, because there were, I mean, there was probably, there were a lot of them by this time. If you remember, there were 600,000 just of men who left Egypt. And they've been populating in the desert. So there's a lot of people. And... So they, the people were told, I don't want that. <sighs> Golly, <laughs> trying to do this. Okay, the people were told that they were not to be with, within, I think it was, that, well, it said so many cubits, but, um... I saw a note that said approximately 300 feet or so many meters. And so they had to, they could not come within a certain distance of the ark because nobody could look or be close to the countenance of God while they were with it, they were in sin unless they were sanctified, which the priests were. So here they are all, I know it's just dots, but that's the way I do it. <laughs> they are all, I'm not used to these bigger frames when it comes, or deals when it comes to this. So, but they are coming in to this area here. They're coming in to here. Because their first place to go is going to be Jericho. And so, I'm sure there was some green here on this side of them. This is what I had not realized at all, was that as they are crossing the Jordan River, because I hadn't really talked, uh, I didn't really remember the story of them crossing the Jordan. But the wa it was deep, but the water was stopped just like a dam, and it stood up. And, and I think what, it, what the Bible meant by stood up is it was worn, you know, it was welled up like behind a dam. But there was no dam other than God's power. And so this is... My, <laughs> my thing of them getting across the Jordan River. Sorry, I, I locked my, <laughs> locked my oxygen tubing in the end of the wheelchair. We'll see you tomorrow. I love you. Good night.